Hey guys, how's it going? Like Butter here. Welcome back to another Division build video. Today we're going to be talking about Hunter's Faith, which was one of the sets that I was the most excited for in this global event. Now, uh, a lot of people are talking about the sets not being super viable, and I think a lot of that has to do with just how strong Striker, Predator's Mark, and Nomad is still currently. Um, so I'm assuming now that all the sets are out, they're going to do some adjustments to those gear sets. I really hope they don't nerf the three gear sets that are viable right now and instead just buff all the ones that aren't as viable um but i think hunter's faith is a really fun set now is it a tier one set absolutely not um i think at best it's a tier two uh but you're not going to see people really running around with it in the dark zone in a solo or in a duo squad it's more going to be for just absolute fun um it can be really good in pvp however you got everyone like kind of strafing around and just kind of uh pretty much doing anything possible to close the gap because this build as good as it is unless you're playing skirmish i think in skirmish this build's going to be fantastic however if you're trying to do just straight up dark zone i don't think this is a fantastic build to do that with i would much rather stick to striker uh predator's mark and nomad for your go-to three builds currently however this build is extremely fun because once you get your stacks up you can hit for huge amounts of damage so i want to share with you guys my hunter's faith build that uh i put together and it's pretty damn good i like it so we're going to be going over uh why i'm using certain things which talents i'm using and alternatives if you're looking for primarily pvp or pve my personal opinion this is more of a pve set um you can use it in pvp which is weird because i thought this was going to be the pvp sniper set um but like i said for skirmish last stand i think it'll be really good where you're in a controlled environment um in the dark zone it's a little bit more situational so with a situational set it's kind of hard to um really predict what's going to go down in the dark zone so let's go over first i'm using the bullfrog this is a recent change i made you can really use any weapon here as your primary it's totally up to you um i am using a bullfrog with brutal responsive and uncomplicated now i'm using brutal on both my weapons because this entire build is based around hitting headshots so i'm going to be aiming for the head 99 percent of the time whereas with a crit damage and crit chance build sometimes you can kind of just shoot for the body like for example with striker just to make sure that you get your stacks up to maximize your damage with this build you're gonna have to hit their head in order to uh, maximize damage output so for my mods obviously on the bullfrog you want to make sure that there are no uh, stability or accuracy mods on the gun whatsoever because that lowers the overall damage of uncomplicated I'm using a VX one scope to maximize my headshot damage um, I'm using an Omega rifle suppressor also to maximize my headshot damage but that little bit of crit damage and crit chance is gonna go a long way um, and then I am using a small grip for the extra crit damage and I am using a extended mag which I have the wrong extended mag on for some reason I don't know why but uh, you actually want to have one of these extended mags here. Yeah, lightweight M4, there we go. So that's a little bit better. Rate of fire, super good, crit chance, and then obviously mag size. So I had the wrong uh, uh, thing there because I just recently made this change. And then this is the most important thing. Now, there are two weapons you want to use with this build. One being the M44, the custom M44, and the second being the M700. Now, specifically, you don't want the classic M700, the just the M700, uh, I forget what, what exactly it's called, but there's one where you can't put attachments on it. Uh, make sure you have the M700 where you can put all the attachments on it, or the custom M44. You don't want the regular M44 you just want the custom m44 because that's the only version of the m44 where you can put max attachments on it so we're uh doing a headshot damage mods of course we're doing a vx1 scope with headshot damage crit chance crit damage um then we're also running an omega rifle suppressor just like on our other weapon to maximize as much headshot damage as possible um and i i know it kind of sucks because the headshot damage like modifier in this game isn't as good as it used to be because it used to be multiplicative and not additive um i really wish that they would buff the headshot damage we've been asking for 
so many patches for them to do that, even if it's just the modifier on some of the other weapons, but, um, you know, for the most part, especially if you're on console, like, it's more beneficial just to shoot the body, um, which is unfortunate. You should be rewarded for being able to hit that perfect string of headshots. But anyways, uh, you know, extended mag, all that good stuff. So let's get into, uh, you know, the pistol. Same as I do with all my builds, I run a low-level pistol so that I can use cool-headed and predatory that's completely up to you. This is optional. You don't need to do it. I think that cool headed is extremely important because it allows me to get my uh, super off cooldown faster. Um, so that's definitely something you want to look into. All right. So let's get into the hunter's faith pieces themselves. Now I am running 9,189 firearms. Um, you're going to see here that in, with hunter's faith, it goes in uh, 3,000 increments, just like it does with predator's mark and uh, striker. Actually, I think predator mark only does one increment of 9,000 but it's essentially around the same thing it's 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 built around um, uh, 3,000 of each so if you don't know what hunter's faith gives you it gives you 20% optimal range which is going to go a long rate like a super long way with the m44 now usually I run an optimal range grip on the M44, but because you're getting optimal range here, uh, you're getting a total of 40%. You do not need a um, vertical grip on your M44. The small grip will do just fine. So 10% headshot damage on the three-piece bonus, and this is the, the big thing that matters the most. Um, so the four-piece bonus, each consecutive shot with a bolt-action marksman rifle that hits an enemy deals 3% more damage. The damage bonus is increased by 4% for every 3,000 firearms. The bonus damage is removed once the shot misses a target upon weapon swap or reload, or after 10 seconds. There's a lot of ores in there. It's kind of a, a you know ongoing sentence there. But essentially how it works is if you miss a shot, boom, all your stacks are gone. If you reload, all your stacks are gone. If you swap weapons, all your stacks are gone. So the four-piece bonus of this is extremely bad. Um, it's very bad, actually. Um, but the six-piece bonus actually makes this four-piece bonus decent. Um, so obviously with the five-piece bonuses, you're going to get enhancements on your two- and three-piece. Uh, but then the six-piece is what really matters. Headshots double the gained increased damage bonus. Two consecutive missed shots are needed to lose the bonus damage. So this allows you to miss a shot in between, which is super helpful. And it also allows you to get your stacks up a lot quicker if you're hitting headshots. Now, you do only want to use this with bolt-action snipers. Um, the non-bolt actions don't stack the damage as quickly um, unless they just removed it all together I'm not sure you would always want to use this set with a bolt action sniper um, so for all my mods I'm running stamina and crit hit chance um, because we want to get our crit hit chance as high as possible so that we can uh, deal the most amount of damage that we can this game has a headshot modifier it has a crit chance uh, damage or crit damage modifier and uh, that Together, if you have really high headshot damage and you end up critting and you have a decent amount of crit damage, you're going to hit for large, large amounts of damage, especially because of the bonus increasing your overall damage as well. Uh, so that is super important to get as much of that as possible. So we're running crit chance on that. On my chest piece, I'm running 11% EDR. Um, obviously maxed out firearms. I'm running health here as well and I'm also running ammo capacity. Now if you're only a PvE or PvE completely, that's it. You want to change exotic damage resilience for enemy armor damage. Um, if you're a little bit of both or you like doing PvP primarily, 6% EAD isn't going to make a huge difference considering there is a PVP modifier and there's also a EAD modifier that runs through its own uh, modifier as well. So it ends up being minuscule, if anything. Um, so yeah, you want to run EAD there if you're doing PVE only. So let's go to the mask here. Now here is uh, one thing that I rather have um, changed, but I didn't play that much of this global event. You guys have probably seen in my last video, I gave my opinions on this, this global event. Um, so I kind of had to go with what I had, ended up rolling firearms and damage to elites, and I have enemy armor damage as my main stat. Now here, a lot argue that having either, you know, skill power, which I don't think is the case here, um, 
but a lot of people argue that having 4% crit chance here is more beneficial, maybe. Um, you also gotta remember, since you're shooting a lot less often, since you're using a bolt action sniper rifle, 4% crit chance really isn't gonna make a huge deal. Now, when you're shooting a bunch of bullets in a short amount of time, 4% becomes more you know, noticeable. 4% um, isn't gonna make a huge difference, and I promise you that on, on sniper rifles, but some people like running that extra 4%. The idea here is, is that you're most likely going to either crit or not crit regardless of that 4%. Um, so, you know, 8% EAD, definitely not ideal, but, uh, you know, it's what I got there, so it's kind of what I'm rolling. And then on my knee pads, I'm running health to give me a little bit, uh, g give me a little tankier. You know, if you really want to run crit damage here, you can. Um, it wouldn't be terrible for me to run crit damage here, which is why I haven't unrolled because I'm still, you know, kind of debating that. Um, but I like the extra little bit of health. It, it makes me not super squishy. But if you're going for more of a glass candy build and you kind of want to put all of your health into damage, maybe you have, or, or sorry, all your stats into damage, maybe you have like a really good heal and you're just doing PvE content and you do a good job keeping in the back of the fight, uh, then that's cool. Um, you can definitely do that. Um, crit damage wouldn't be a terrible thing to have here, especially because your crit chance is going to be decently high if you're running Vicious on your sniper like I am. So um, damage to elites, really important here. Whether you're doing PvE or PvP, you'd be surprised how much damage to elites will help you out. Whether it's clearing out NPCs out of a certain area in the dark zone when you're trying to get away from rogues. Or you're rogue and you're trying to get away from players and that extra percent is going to help you kind of clear out the area. It's going to be huge. You're going to notice a huge difference on that because of the uh, insane amount of headshot damage that you're going to have so that's really important there um let's go over to the backpack where this is once again one of those that you can kind of come up with yourself um you can see here i have this completely min max which i think it just rolled to the max capacity without me even rolling it but this is completely up to you as well um this is crit damage, or you can do more health. If you feel like you're a little too squishy and you feel like that crit damage isn't important, you can do health here. That's why I have it unrolled, because I'm still considering uh, maybe switching it. So this is totally up to you. I've noticed that the extra crit damage can go a long way, and I'm even considering changing my knee pads to crit damage as well, because that extra 16,000 health really isn't going to change too much. But However, you are using a skill that is going to heal you for the percentage of your health so the extra health does help you stay alive a little bit more but the idea of the sniper build is to kind of stay way in the back of your team and, and do large amounts of damage without really being in harm's way uh while well, you got the predator marks you got the uh you know the nomads and the strikers out in front of the team while you kind of just do maximum damage in the back with your healer um so yeah, that's that's that. Let's go down to our gloves. Now this is really important that you have marksman rifle damage here. Marksman rifle damage is extremely important. Um, if you're going to be using um, only, if you're only going to be doing PVE, you might want to put EAD here uh, for instead of like something like crit chance. Uh, if you really want to. That's up to you. I end up running crit chance anyways. Um, crit damage, crit chance, marksman rifle damage. I think this is the most beneficial uh, damage output. But like I said, EAD goes a long way, especially if you're stacking it. Um, so that's that. Let's go down to our holster. Now we're running crit chance on the holster. This is up to you. I, I always either run crit chance or uh, you know if, if you need a little more health, you could run health here. Uh, if you're doing a skill haste build, that would be good here. It's skill haste on a hunter's faith build, not really what you want to be building because your skills aren't going to be incredibly useful to you anyways. So you might as well get that little bit of extra crit chance and it, it starts stacking up. Uh, you'd be surprised. Okay, so let's go over to our talents really quickly and we'll go over our skills as well i'm running pulse now the important thing is my performance mods i am running pulse critical hit damage now the reason i'm running that is because the critical hit damage is going to allow us to maximize our build when we do end up hitting a crit so that's really important to use that there now if you're doing pve you want to switch over to scrambler instead and then for our second skill we're running uh life support 
for PvE, and then for PvP, we're running Immunizer. Now, why are we running this instead of a first aid? Well, because the heal is going to be larger on your med box, because when you blow the med box up, it heals you for a percentage of your health, which is going to heal you for a lot more than what your 80,000 skill power is going to heal you for with your uh, you know, booster shot or whatever it may be. Okay, so let's go into our talents really quickly here. Now, this is the most important talent for this build. One is none. Now, the reason this is so important is because with this build, you need to prolong your magazine as long as possible, which is why you run an extended mag. Now, the extended mag is going to increase your uh, clip from 5 to 10 or from 5 to 11, depending on the size of your magazine. Um, and if you're using the M700, I believe it starts at 7 bullets instead of five in a mag so that's going to be really helpful because this gives you a 50 percent chance of not consuming the bullet which is absolutely huge another thing is you're going to be using precision because you're going to be going for mainly headshots and you're going to be using strike back and also critical save as well so here's a little bit of gameplay of the build in action before the global event concluded which means you're going to see us do a little bit more damage than it will without the global event because you're getting the damage bonus from being stationary. Uh, however, this build, although it's not recommended to do while playing solo, um, it's super fun to just go in and do huge amounts of damage uh, to enemies. Um, but like I said, I still rate this build as a tier two when it comes to PVP. Uh, but for PVE, if you're in a group, especially for like legendary missions or incursions, um, this build is going to allow you to get through content extremely easy. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop the video a like. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll talk to you next time. Take care, everybody.